Hey there. Uh, I've gotten some requests about doing a video on making your own nibs. I'm going to try and show you a few things. First, I'm going to get this welding head out of the way. Come here, you. Okay, gives us a little more space to work with. So, based on the die I showed you a while back, find the actual where things are. Where are things? There we go. So making the shape of a nib isn't really that tough when you've got uh, a die press. Even making a, an initial curve isn't too hard. What gets you is if you're using a Yobo, fitting onto one of these, specifically fitting into the hardware in the first place. So that's a pretty bumpy handmade nib. For every single nib you make, you have to fit it to this booger. That uh, is kind of difficult. And I'll tell you why. Yowo has a complex curve. You start out circular at the back, but by the time you get to the front, it's an oval. But worse than that, it's not on the same plane. It actually goes down. So your nib not only has to fit the round at the back, but descend on the other on the plane and fit the oval in the front. I'm doing this with a combination of about uh, maybe 10 different tools. And it is a massive pain in the butt. And that's even before you get to the worst part. The worst part is not tipping. Tipping with a good welder, I'm learning, is not all that hard. It's the slitting. You can't slit this when it's flat. It has to be completely curved and ready to go before you can slit it. Now, some people, like uh, Magna Carta pens, actually have a saw blade. They, you know, push the, the uh, nib onto. Uh, you'll see that in videos for Lamy also. Uh, Mont Blanc does it this way. Um, either they've got steadier hands or they've got some sort of uh, stabilizing mechanism for this. I think Huron and the gang over at Magna Carta just have really, really steady hands. Unless he's doing something we haven't talked about. But, uh, you know, I'll wrangle him for more information the next time I see him. Um, so assuming, assuming you get the tip on, you get it slit, polish it up so it looks pretty, because eh, this is a, a little on the bumpy side. Um, slot it into the nib in the feed, or rather the, the collar in the feed. And I'm going to try and show you this, <laughs> looking at my screen while filming. Uh, that's always fun. It's going to be a tight fit. It's always a tight fit. And it's not quite right because I didn't align this looking at it properly. Anyway, some wriggling required. You'll know if you've got this wrong because the collar will split. And all the work you've done, at least for this one, isn't in vain, but it's just not going to turn out as happily as you might think it would or hope it would. So that's an update on making your own nibs. Now, this being said, if you're using steel sheet and then of course getting it out, eh, sorry about that noise there, little effort. Getting it out is tough. Um, I'm using 304 stainless at the moment. If I can get 316 sheet, I'll be really happy because it's even more stain resistant than 304 is. Uh, 
304 and 316 lean into the biocompatible steels, which means they can make implants out of these that don't uh, turn you into a horrible pus-filled mess. Um, yeah. If you're using precious metals, like uh, argentium silver, which I believe someone in Korea is doing, uh, or gold, if you've got that kind of money, you're at least able to go back and anneal the metal and then go from reshaping from, from start. And that's great. Steel's a little funkier, um, especially when you can't really control a propane torch in terms of temperature to know when you're about to turn this into a puddle or you've got it annealed. Um, now, if you're a knife maker and you've got a little even heat kiln that you can set at a particular temperature, you're good. But when you're a small hobby crafter doing these things one at a time and praying every single time that they're actually going to make it through, you might not have that kind of equipment. So if you're using steel, be prepared for, if you're lucky, a five to one success failure rate, or rather failure success rate. I'm hovering at around 10 to one right now, which is why there are not a lot of these. But once you've got the process down, you're doing great. Once you can get the process, you can start doing repetition. And then you get into the, okay, I'm doing them, I'm doing them repeatedly, and they're, they're coming out pretty well. Do I sell these guys? Do I just make a lot of them, each one of them, keyed to do something different? And if I do decide to sell them, what do I sell them at? Because this is taking so much longer than a stacked nib does. Much, much longer. Exponentially longer. Um, I don't know. That's what I'm currently fighting with. Um, because I've got a couple that are in saleable condition. Honestly, I probably should think about it more before I do anything like that. We'll see. Um, the lure of money, because money equals better tools, <laughs> and I'm a bit of a tool whore, um, is tough to fight with. So anyway, this is a little bit more thinking on making nibs yourself. A um, little bit of a, an eyeball into how my brain works, which is basically scattered. And I probably should work with the script, but I don't. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. It's Father's Day here in the United States, and I'm going to shout out to my father, rest his soul, because I inherited his desire for crafts, desire to make art, and the hands that can do it and the brain that can see it. So, Dad, if you're listening, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I miss you. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, take some time to remember your dads, near, far, deceased or not. And in the meantime, I'll see you around.